Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, afternoon's uh, NITEP colloquium. <clears throat> and uh, this month we had uh, already a previous speaker speaking, uh, who also sp spoke at the, at the summer school. And today we have uh, uh, another speaker who's uh, busy this month uh, um, lecturing uh, the, the, the participants of the NITEP CHPC uh, summer school. So we are very happy to have uh, <clears throat> Professor Ilya uh, Sinaiski with us. <clears throat> And uh, let me uh, briefly introduce uh, Ilya. Ilya did his uh, PhD in 2003 uh, at the state uh, at Samara State University in uh, in the Russian Federation. <clears throat> but in 2007 uh, or in 2008, um, he oh, sorry sorry he did his PhD in 2007. Sorry, Ilya, I, I, I can't read. Yeah, and in 2008 he joined uh, UKZN as, as as a postdoc. A few years later, he became a NITEP um, researcher for several years until uh, he was appointed as a, a senior lecturer at UKZN. And, and, and this year, uh, he was promoted to, to associate professor. So congratulations for that, Ilya. And uh, Ilya, of course, he will speak about uh, <laughs> open quantum system, which is one of the topics that, uh, that he's working uh, upon. And, and he will tell us everything about that just now. On the panel, you see also Dr. Gary Kemp. Gary uh, is working at the University of Johannesburg. And, um, and recently, he also developed uh, an interest for, for open quantum system. And I think Ilya will also speak about uh, some work that he uh, did jointly with, uh, with, with Gary. And Ga Gary kindly agree, agreed to moderate the question and answer session during and after, and after the talk. So Ilya, uh, if you are ready, I think we can, uh, we can start. So you're welcome to, to share your screen. And, uh, and start with your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francesco. Uh, let's try it. I assume that you can see my presentation in the full screen. Yes, we can see it clearly. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present kind of some, some, of, some of our results in the field of open quantum system in particular to with application to the structures which we call open quantum box and this work is uh, was mainly done in collaboration with francesco as well as uh, french mathematician stefano tal and uh, as part of the work which i will present is was also done in collaboration with uh, gary who is also here on the panel okay thank you let me start okay so just uh, standard slide so that for everyone who is from Durban, this is doesn't look surprising, but for everyone else, yes, that's how the Durban is looking like, but not from the University of KwaZulu Natal, where we are based, Francesco and I, but that's how it looks from the beach. And you also see that University of KwaZulu Natal have, have five campuses and we are based in Bestel campus. Okay, so uh, my, my basic structure of the talk will be so kind of, I'm just going to, to tell you two words about uh, what are the quantum walks and what, what, are, what, are kind of, what, what kind of walks do we know? What are the classical walks, what are the quantum walks? And afterwards, I'm going to spend the, the major part of the talk in describing to you uh, what are these structures which we call uh, open quantum walks? What are these properties? I will give you some examples. We're also uh, in the good spirit of the theory of open quantum systems formulated uh, microscopic derivation of this uh, open quantum walks. So we've, we've demonstrated that you can derive them from some system bath models in the born mark of approximation. Afterwards, I will tell you a few words about that uh, how this microscopic derivation lead us to the question that you need to modify existing uh, central limit theorems and that leads us to formulation with Gary of uh, lazy open quantum walks and kind of that would be kind of the major part about the uh, quantum walks afterwards I'm going to spend some time in describing to you uh, some very special limit of open quantum walks it's called scaling limit which leads to a new type 
of um, Brownian motion, which is called open quantum Brownian motion. And afterwards, I'm just going to briefly mention a couple of possible application of open quantum walks, uh, which we developed some time ago. One is for dissipative quantum computing and another one for some transport of uh, excitations in the possibly quantum, bio on possibly biological systems. Okay, so classical walks. So first of all, yes, uh, classical walks is well-known structure or, or construction. And in the very simple case, for example, if we want to walk on the line, we could have uh, a classical walk along, uh, uh, along the line. And if we have a probability of stepping left and stepping right, and the probability is the same as one half, on average, we're going to stay uh, to stay in the middle. This is a famous uh, kind of famous result. But in fact, you can define classical walks on various structures. So you can define them on the various graphs. And uh, as it um, have been shown that uh, classical walks found a very wide application in the in not, not only in the description of the physical systems like diffusion, but also in mm. economics, finance, in mm. computer science for the formulation of the algorithms and so on and so forth. So this all leads some time ago, by now probably around 30 years ago, to the structure of kind of the, the there was a kind of obvious question. If we can do so good with the classical walks and kind of default motto of people who is doing quantum physics is quantum can do it better. Whatever you can do classically, quantum can do it better. So and the idea was, okay, can we do better walks than uh, classical walks? And for, in order to do the quantum walks or what we call here unitary quantum walks, there was a model uh, suggested, which was which have the following components. So there is some, again, line or graph or some structure. Uh, but the walker has some internal degree of freedom. And this internal degree of freedom is quantum mechanical, inherently quantum mechanical. For example, it could be spin of the electron and the electron is jumping. And uh, the power of these quantum walks or unitary quantum walks is coming from the entanglement between the position of the spin uh, and or the position of the electron with spin and the kind of the state of the spin. Okay, so, and um, usually this track, uh, this kind of uh, quantum walks are performed by successive operation of the quantum coin operator, uh, operation, which is in this slide is presented by one of the simplest possible coins, which is called Hadamar coin and uh, conditional shift. So kind of you first apply the Hadamar coin and afterwards you do a conditional shift where if your spin is up, you move, uh, you move in the one direction along the graph. If your spin is down, you move in the other direction of the graph. And this kind of a generic structure when you, when you kind of following this recipe, one can define many different types of walks. So in order to make it a little bit more explicit what I'm talking about, let, let's consider you know, a very simple example. So if we have an initial state in the side zero and we're walking along the line, our spin is up. So we apply the quantum coin, we're going to get a superposition, which is written here after the application of the Hadamard gate. And afterwards we're doing conditional, um, conditional shift and we're ending up in a superposition. And this superposition already is looking like something like an entangled state. For those of you who is familiar with the basics of quantum information. Okay, so and after the kind of and the walk is performed by successive operation of this uh, Hadamard coin and conditional shift. Okay, so and if we have Mathematica, and uh, obviously we have Mathematica, we can always begin to play experimental mathematics game, and we can plot distributions, and this is kind of have been, you can find this distribution in multiple papers on the quantum walk. So let's start with a symmetric initial state. So our spin is uh, given by the state like, uh, like it is drawn on the slide. It starts in the zero. Now we're going to plot the probability to find a walker on the corresponding side after 100 steps. So as it's begin to evolve, so one graph is scaled and another is unscaled, but it's essentially the same graph of the same probability distribution. And one could clearly see that this kind of distribution is very much different from the structure of the probability distribution, which you get for the classical random walks. So the classical random walk on average, your walker is going to stay in the center and not going to move everywhere, anywhere. 
while here for the unitary quantum walks, the walker is going to run away from the center. And it's running away from the center in so-called ballistic way. So it's running as fast as it is possible. And essentially the peak of the distribution is uh, moving as uh, time divided by square root of two for this kind of uh, structures. This is a typical ballistic propagation. So we can play this game again, but for this kind of initial state, and if it's unsymmetric, as a result, we're getting some sort of uh, asymmetric distribution. Okay, so, and this idea is that now we can have a structure which can walk on the graphs and can visit the different areas of the graphs much faster than you can do it diffusively with the classical walks, lead to kind of an idea of using and developing certain quantum algorithms for possible implementation on the uh, quantum hardware. Um, in particular for search problems. And there are some uh, papers where it was demonstrated that in quantum search, which is based on the quantum walks on the certain graphs is much more efficient than any other implementations of quantum walks or quant quantum search, not even discussing that corresponding classical search algorithms. Okay, so, but uh, as you can see, this kind of distribution is very far away from the type of Gaussian distribution which one is getting in the classical uh, picture. And there is nothing in between. And as we know, what is in between of usually because this is a fully coherent walk and uh, classical is kind of fully incoherent walk. And what is usually in between these two worlds is, about, uh, is usually the world of dissipation and decoherence. And so that's lead us uh, some time ago, so to the uh, to, to formulate these structures, which I call, uh, which we call open quantum walks. Okay, so and how we formulated it, we formulated it in the following way. So we have some graph on which we are going to walk, and it's kind of we have some nodes, and we can jump between the nodes. So the walker can jump between the nodes, and uh, in order to describe a dissipative character of these jumps, so what we want, we want to define kind of a local cross map on the side. And uh, for the students who attended the summer school today, I exactly introduced the quantum channel. So this, this way of writing should be familiar to you. And uh, in order to describe the effect of motion of the walker from one node to another node, we define a set of uh, cross operators or um, yes, uh, cross operators which satisfy the normalization condition and of course normalization condition give us standard uh, conservation of probability okay so and uh, the natural thing which, uh, which come out of this formulation that this uh, kind of uh, the structures resembles or kind of becomes something which is called uh, kind of a quantum analog of the classical Markov chains, which are also a very interesting object, which, is, which find a wide application in computer science and uh, in physics and many, many other fields. Okay, so how do walk is implemented? So if we have a normalization condition on a set of operators, so what we can do, we can define kind of on each node, we can define a small map MJ, which is kind of describing to us the effect of the walkers coming in and coming out from the node. Okay, so, and now we can take this uh, small map and put it on the total map by using the dilation step, which is uh, shown in the, in the middle of the slides. And it's very easy exercise to see that uh, the map, which is given by this kind of dilated uh, jumps, jumps in the internal degree of freedom plus jumps in the position will form a, a global completely positive trace preserving map, meaning the map which is physical and which is kind of driving to us some, some sort of physical evolution where in this case it's driven by the dissipation. Okay, so now the question is like, okay, this is a very nice and generic uh, structures. So now the question is how can we see what's happening? And in that case, we could, for example, put all the, uh, walk uh, all the walk along, along the one along one one line and uh, i is a node and row i is a state of the walker on the node and now if we apply one step of the quantum walk what we're going to see we're going to see that uh, one iteration of the quantum walk is defined by the formula in the blue frame okay so and the, as in the case of unitary walk open quantum walk is implemented by the iterative application, but not 
conditional shift and the quantum coin, but this sort of map. Okay. So if we are on the line, what we can do, because in the, uh, in the case of the uh, classical random walk, we can construct so-called Pascal triangle, so which kind of resemble the probabilities of being on the each side. So you start from the top and you're there with probability one, afterwards you jump left, right, with probability one half, one half. Afterwards, from plus minus one, you jump left, right with probability one half, one half. So you get one quarter, one quarter in the center, one half. And you build up your Pascal triangle. And we can play the very similar game and construct the Pascal triangle for the open quantum walks. And in this case, uh, the quantumness uh, of our structure will be in the fact that now the probability to jump to the left and to the right uh, will be determined not only by our structure of the graph, or kind of by the fact that we're jumping on the line or we're jumping on the on the on the lattice and so on and so forth, but also as you see that kind of after the step one, plus one is b rho uh, b rho zero b dagger, and after kind of to the in the side minus one c rho zero c dagger. So it's mean that the probability to be on the side uh, on the side plus one and minus one will also depends on the inner state of the walker. And you can repeat this process iteratively and build this sort of uh, quantum Pascal triangle. Okay, so now we can play a little bit of experimental mathematics because if we have some structure, we, have, we can generate matrices which satisfy our uh, completely positive map pro, uh, uh, pro, uh, kind of conditions and we can begin to, to see what probability distributions are we going to get. And as a first very simple case, which is diagonal case, we can see the two matrices B and C which describe to us transition in the internal degree of freedom with a jumping left and jumping right. Yes, so kind of B and C satisfy normalization condition. And if we start from the as generic state as possible, so we start from the zero, but we don't know anything about in a degree of freedom, it's totally unpolar uh, unpolarized. So what we can get, we can construct this Pascal triangle. And it's clear from here that it doesn't really look like the Pascal triangle, which we, which we have for the classical random walk. So it's kind of rather different. And even more in the graph, we can see that we get some sort of distribution in the shades of gray and a very distinct uh, blocked population, which is like a soliton-like structure. And this is already something very interesting that these kind of structures can give us both and kind of uh, diffusive-like solutions, but also ballistic-like solutions. Okay, let's keep going playing our experimental mathematics game. So now we can choose such businesses, we can also construct the Pascal triangle, we begin to see that some, we get more interesting numbers, but here in this case, we just get a kind of Gaussian-like distribution, which is slowly shifting in one direction. Okay, so we can do it again. Oops, I think this slide will be new already. Sorry. Okay, so now in order to play it a little bit more interesting, one can generate some parameterized Bs and Cs, increase dimension, internal dimension from two to something a little bit more interesting where you have more possibilities for different options. So in this case, it's a five by five matrices which are parameterized by the single parameter alpha. And now we can just begin to play again, experimental game in Wolfram Mathematica. So alpha is one over pi. And that's what we're going to see. So we clearly see two Gaussian distributions and one solid on like distributions, which are propagating in various directions. So we can choose some other number. And again, we see certain behaviors. So we see that Gaussian distribution is essentially not movable. And we see again, syntonic behavior. And uh, on the, in, a, in other direction, we see that the Gaussian is forming, but much, much slower. Okay, so in principle, one could go on and try to understand where these structures are coming from. And uh, these have been done by our colleagues. These have been done by Stefano Tau and as well as his math kind of mathematician uh, colleagues by Rafael Carbone and Corsas in analysis of so-called central limit theorem and central limit theorem um, for the so-called reducible open quantum walks. Okay, but what we have done, because we said, okay, we decided now we can play the game of experimental mathematics. That's very good. But always the question is that 
can we create such structures in the lab? Or can we come up with the solutions when such structures will kind of be coming from some physical picture? And as I mentioned today in during the morning lecture on the quantum channel, the fact that uh, the open quantum blocks are defined as a completely positive trace preserving channel, it means that there is definitely exist a unitary which include them, uh, which kind of which will kind of which could be dilated to it via Steinspring, but we would still would like to go not this route, but go more traditional route of open quantum systems. So, and for that we are going to do microscopic derivation, and the recipe for microscopic derivation is looking like this. So we need to define system bath and system bath Hamiltonian. So system in this case will be the set of nodes which are indexed by index i. Omega i is local Hamiltonian of degree of freedom. So uh, the projectors i i is a projector on the position in the node and the omega i is a, some sort of local Hamiltonian which describe um, internal degree of freedom. So it's kind of like it could be your Hamiltonian of the two level system as we are going to see in, in the example. Okay, and the bath, each node between which we can jump is connected to each other of harmonic oscillators. And by the interaction with the bath, Walker can, ju can jump between this kind of adjacent nodes. Okay, so now the crucial question and the question which can uh, kind of will determine the degree of success of our endeavor is how to construct the system bath Hamiltonian, which are going to lead us to the open quantum walks. And in order to achieve that, what we have done, we understood that in order to get open quantum walk like structure, the bath should assist jump, which will be conditional on the internal degree of freedom. So how to do that? So we need to couple all three kind of operators linearly, at least linearly, linearly is the simplest case. Uh, uh, from the kind of from the internal degree of freedom, jumping part, and the bus part, and you can see that you know if you kick out in any of these uh, ingredients, you're not going to obtain open quantum walks. You might obtain just uh, just a unitary dynamics, or you can obtain non-dissipative dynamics, or you can obtain uh, kind of something uh, like internal dynamics without jumps or just jumps which are ir irrelevant of the internal degree of freedom so it could be something like a classical uh, random walk which is ir irrelevant of internal degree of freedom so in order to obtain quantum walks we really need to couple all all the degrees of freedoms or all, all the degrees of freedom so we need to, to couple internal degree position and bus degree of freedom and this is done in the simplest case in the uh, system bus Hamiltonian, which you can see on the in the, in the bottom of the slide. Okay, so, and afterwards, if we're, if we're there, we can go absolutely, since now on, we just go absolutely standard route on the theory of open quantum systems and apply standard born mark of approximation, where system in this case, as it was defined in the original Hamiltonian, it's a walker on the nodes. So kind of walker with the nodes is the system. And now kind of for this, kind of large system from which afterwards we will still need to go on the level of the walker only. Uh, we're applying Bohr Markov approximation and by applying kind of, by playing that again, standard game, we're getting the, the large equations for the kind of forgetting the master equation for the, for the walker with the nodes. Now, the next step, what we need to do, we need to get rid of the nodes because our idea that we want to have equations for the quantum walk without graph. So the graph should be as an index in our equations. In order to do that, we go to the form which we used in the open quantum walks. So when the rho i is a positive operator or kind of the fraction of the density matrix of the walker on the node i together with the projection of the position on the node i. And if we kind of, if we, if we apply to kind of our original equation obtained, we're going to see a couple of things. First of all, we're going to see that these equations have a structure which is called uh, generalized master equations, which were uh, introduced by Hans Peter Breuer, Francesco Scotha in the book of on theory of open quantum systems. And uh, this is kind of one of the possible generalization of the Limbot master equation, which have a several uh, properties and one of them is indicated on the slide is saying that this, this form so that you have a operator on the internal degree of freedom 
tensor on the projection is going to be conserved. So it means that our structure of open quantum work in this case is going to be conserved. And formally, this set of equations is describing to us continuous time open quantum works. Okay, so, but our task was to introduce the discrete time open quantum works and there is two ways of doing it. So we can solve explicitly equations, but in general case, this is rather difficult. And the next way around is to use the final difference approach. So replace derivative of the uh, density matrix of the walker or partial density matrix of the walker on the side I with the final difference. And afterwards with the terms which are linear in Delta where the Delta is a small iteration step, we expand our equation. And as a result, we were able to construct discrete time quantum walk and the iteration formula is uh, shown on the on the slide. Okay, so now we need to try to see whether if what the structure which we suggest have any meaning. And so we do, we start first with the two node graph. So it have a kind of in, in a degree of freedom with a two level system. And we have our system by Hamiltonian, we play all the game we get generalized mass equation for the row one and row two, where row one and row two is the, is the walker on the side, is the state of the walker on the node one and the state of the walker on the node two. And after we discretize, we can produce what, what will be the probability of behavior to find the walker on each side. And you, and you can see that clearly the walker is going to jump between the side until it's coming to some thermal state. In the more general case, uh, so if we, for example, yes, consider the walker, which is walk, walking on the circle of the nodes, and this how it's is described by the following Hamiltonian, it's again, for simplicity, it's just a two-level system as the internal degree of freedom, or spin as, a two, uh, as the internal degree of freedom. There will be weak external field, and there will be kind of conditional uh, system bus interaction in the standard rotating wave approximation form. So again, by applying the formalism, which I just demonstrated to you, we're going to get a set of equations for the continuous time open quantum walks, okay? And now kind of that this is a little illustration. So we get the iteration formula and we can begin to play the game of experimental mathematics. And we can see how the system is evolving. And this is it uh, on the kind of, just on the graphs, we can see the typical distribution for the different uh, temperatures of the bar. Okay, so and what interesting is in this set of equations so that we can see that the temperature of the environment could, could play the role of the system which is controlling the type of the quantum trajectories or kind of individual behavior of the walkers in the single realizations as we see. So if the, if the bath is at zero temperature, uh, then we get a ballistic spread. And if the bath is at not zero temperature, we get a, a diffusive trajectories. Okay, so we can also calculate coherence just to see that the system behave quantumly and the lower the temperature, the more quantum system is. And the, uh, the temperature is here related to the average number of photons, the smaller the average number of photons, the lower the temperature is. Okay, so, and one more slide about this example because we're going to use it just now in the lazy open quantum works is that uh, using that structures, we can calculate some statistical properties of the walker. We can calculate, so when we're going to get some Gaussian wave package, what would be the average speed of this wave package and what would be the average spread of that Gaussian distribution and kind of the typical behaviors are presented on this, uh, on this slide. And the reason why I'm telling you this because we're going to drive this Expressions not put forcefully, but from more generic approach in the work which we've done together with Gary. And it's coming in a couple of slides because now I'm going just to, to mention quite a few things which have been done in the field of open quantum works. Because as I mentioned, Stefan uh, with collaborators have constructed uh, central limit theorems. Rafaela Carbone have also studied the generalization for the case of so-called reducible open quantum work. So when you can have a multiple solutions or, mult or multiple Gaussians. Uh, afterwards, there was also find uh, kind of people begin because open quantum works is the generalization of the uh, kind of, or is a quantum analog of the classical Markov chains. What people have done, they begin to apply and begin to study all possible quantities, which they, which, which were done for the, in case of the classical Markov chain in this situation. And there was a, whole slew of papers which, which are dealing with that aspects. The only thing which I want to bring 
your attention to is the last two publications. So one is with our uh, master student at that moment about non-reversal open quantum works where we try to put together two very difficult things. So we have, we're trying to put together self-avoidance and quantum works, and there are reasons why it's very difficult. So if you're interested, you're welcome to read the paper and also the work with Gary, which I'm going to tell just now about. Okay, so two words about lazy open quantum works. So what we see from microscopic derivation that we not only have probabilities of jumps, but we always have in microscopic uh, derivation self jumps. And original central limit theorems, which were done by the Stefano Artal and Raffaello Carbone, they do not take that into account. And we desperately need it if we want to analyze microscopically derived open quantum box. So we set out to solve this problem together with Gary and we were quite successful and kind of mathematical results are presented on this slide. But instead of uh, talking about mathematical results, let me just show you how it's, for example, applied to the example which we have in microscopic derivation. So for the quantum walk on the, on the circle of nodes, Yes, we can analytically calculate in a more general case than in the microscopic derivation paper. We could calculate uh, mean and uh, standard deviation. We can also apply these structures, for example, for two-dimensional walks and uh, or kind of a walk on the lattice, on the squared lattice. And in this case, you see the examples of the limit distribution or kind of to which distribution the quantum uh, Lazy open quantum walk will converge. And if you are interested in the details, again, I encourage you to, to read the manuscript because it's written very nicely. Thank you, Gary. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about a little bit about very interesting kind of, it's, it's not even open quantum walks. It's a structure which is called open Brownian motion. And it's very interesting because uh, it, was, it was done by our, colleagues from France by Michel Bauer, Denis Bernard, and Antoine Tilloy. And the idea is that there is a transition. So kind of when you do the uh, classical random walks and you do them kind of for the discrete time, so 50% left, 50% right probability of jump, and you do it. But afterwards, you want to end up with some continuous distribution. And there is not so many options how you can do it. And one of the option is doing so-called scaling limit. When you say that uh, small change in time and small change in, in space are related to each other by the certain relations. And when it's uh, have this structure, when the small change in time is equal to the uh, small change in space squared, it's called scaling limit and it's physical limit because it's or, or one of the physical limits because there is not so many options. It's leading to something which is very famous in physics and known which is called diffusion equation. Okay, so, and essentially what the Michel Bauer, Denis Bernard and Andrew Tilloy have done, they have done it for the open quantum walks. So they say that, okay, let's take an open quantum walk on the line. We have our jumps to the left and to the right. And now let's assume that it's kind of done for the small steps. And now let's expand in space and in time. And afterwards we're going to, to put together space and time change with kind of with respect to each other with relationship other scaling limit and see what we're going to get. And what they have demonstrated that you are going to end up in an equation which is looking like this. And this is a very interesting equation because in this equation, we have a mixture between the uh, classical and quantum degrees of freedom. The position of the walker is classical because it's just described by diffusion equation. The internal degree of freedom like spin or kind of state of the two levels is quantum because it's described by the Limbot equation. But there is a term which is in between, which is like, uh, they call it a, quantum gyroscope, or it's a term which mixes the quantum and classical degrees of freedom. And uh, this kind of lead to the very interesting classes of behavior. And they study it on the trajectory levels where you can see at the certain scenarios, you're going to get uh, ballistic trajectories and the other scenarios, you're going to get a diffusive trajectories. And very similar structures were derived independently by the large Joshi exactly and the set of this task, how to construct a distribution kind of like a density matrix or kind of an object which could be, which could have a quantum and classical degrees of freedom simultaneously. And surprisingly enough, he came to the very similar or kind of in some cases identical uh, constructions. Okay, so, and what we have done uh, in, this, in this field, we have just said, okay, um, this is a very nice equation. Can we derive them microscopically? And yes, we perform microscopic derivation. And uh, so, Again, we could play standard uh, 
a macroscopic derivation game. We can uh, perform Born Markov approximation. We can construct mass equations, and afterwards we could perform the uh, kind of construct the corresponding open Brownian motion, which get the following term, or kind of which get the following shape in this case, and it's exactly in the form as it was suggested by the Bauer, Kelloy, and Bernard. So kind of it's have a diffusive term, it have a lingua term, and it's also have kind of this quantum coin term or quantum gyroscope term, which is kind of uh, determined to us uh, how the quantum state is steering the classical degree of freedom, or you can see it how the position of the Brownian walker is dictating what quantum degree of freedom kind of what should be the state of the spin. So you can have this kind of duality uh, approach to, to, to the interpretation of this equation. And we could also study because there is an interesting observation because I mentioned a few times and also in kind of when I'm talking about the uh, open quantum walks that there is a central limit theorem. And the central, what does the central limit theorem is telling to us? It's telling to us in the very rough terms that after some time, if under certain conditions, kind of everything becomes Gaussian, which means that everything becomes kind of inherently uh, classical. And so kind of open in this is the generic uh, kind of fate of the open quantum walks. However, it's not the case with this open Brownian motions, because in the case of open Brownian motions, it can be kind of shown from the so-called unravelings that they that they are not satisfying central limit theorem. And we went other way around. So we use the fact that if your distribution is Gaussian for the long time, you can calculate the cumulants and the higher order cumulants will vanish. So, and that's exactly what we have done. So using the equation for the open Brownian motion, we wrote the equation for the moments of this structure. And if you can write the equation for the moments from the standard statistics course, we know that we can relate moments to the cumulants. And we get a set of equations, which are in the case which we consider can be solved. And we can calculate the cumulant, for example, of the third order, and just to see under which condition this cumulant is zero. And it's mean at least to the third order in cumulants, this is uh, uh, the, the structures that or open Brownian motion is satisfying central limit theorem or not satisfying. Okay, so, and that's what we've got. So we can see there's a certain cases and what we've seen that uh, in indeed, so open Brownian motion is usually almost always is non-Gaussian. So there are some uh, kind of, there are some uh, ranges of parameters when they demonstrate a Gaussian behavior. So they behave like something like an uh, open quantum box or just a classical random box in some sense, but there are ranges of behavior when it's uh, behave uh, completely different. And there will be, I think one more example uh, yes, of, for some other initial conditions, but essentially, and this could have very simple interpretation. And let me try to give you interpretation here, yes. Okay, essentially the idea here is very, very simple. So what we can see that Hamiltonian here uh, of the system, so kind of the, what, what, is the, what is the system? So you have an open Brownian motion. So you have a kind of like electron which could continuously moves in some kind of along some line and this have a spin. So, and this spin is weakly driven. And when you drive the spin very weakly, you can ignore this driving. And in this case, uh, the electron behave like two electrons, electron with a spin up and electron with a spin down. And this is two independence, independent walkers. Of course, you get a statistical mixture and you get one electron, but formally speaking, they, they do not see each other. And this is two kind of subspaces of the state of the electron behave independently and live separately. There is another case. So when you drive very strongly, so in this we see, sorry, on the graph. So we see that when the uh, log lambda is uh, large and small. So kind of when we drive very strongly, we are just in the uh, eigenvalues of the driving. And in this case, we also get splitting. But only when we're in some intermediate values, we could see that suddenly we're getting strong coupling and non-Gaussian behavior. Okay. Okay, so and I'm slowly coming to an end because I just need to tell you about application of open quantum walks to the dissipative quantum computing and quantum biology. Okay. Okay, so one more kind of application of the open quantum walks which we were uh, looking 
looking into was uh, can we do the dissipative quantum computing? And this is based on the paper which was uh, published by uh, Frank Verstraten, Michael Wolf, and Ignacio Tsirak in 2009, uh, where they suggested that you can do a so-called universal quantum computation by dissipation. And this is this was a very counterintuitive idea because traditionally, if you open standard books on quantum information, the dissipation is something which prevents you. Dissipation and decoherence is something which has prevent you from doing computations. But this argument was that if we're going to be smart and if we're going to control dissipations in a kind of in a smart way, we can use it to help us to perform the computation. Uh, unfortunately, it's a theoretical idea and it's still kind of theoretical, but it's a very elegant idea. So, and kind of we decided we also want to see, can we do the similar game with the open quantum walks. And uh, the mathematically what they suggested is that they're going to have uh, two types of registers very much in the spirit. Uh, and there was an original paper which uh, gave birth to the ideas of quantum computation, which was written by the Richard Feynman, uh, where he suggested that uh, when you're going to do the kind of, to use the quantum mechanics to simulate late quantum mechanics, you will need to kind of when he was not just proposing it, but when he was descri describing the mechanism, he was suggesting that he is going to have a two types of register. One will be the registers which describe to you the state of the system or simulate the state of the system, and another which de describe you the different instances of this system. And so kind of the system is going to evolve between these different time instances. And here it's exactly done with the with the kind of uh, with the similar picture in mind. So the Limbot uh, dissipation terms, they have uh, two types of terms. One type of terms, which is making sure that a uh, system is evolving in a certain direction in time. And another is, which is as the system is evolving in that direction in time, it's getting on every time step, the certain unitary, which needs to be implemented for unitary uh, quantum walks is getting implemented. So in the, uh, in the system subspace, what you have in every time slot, you have a system which have uh, undergo certain application of the kind of uh, unitary circuit which we want to implement initially. Okay, so, and the main result was related to the fact that if you can perform it, your probability of success will go as one over T where the T is the number of steps which you need to implement. Okay, so, we decided we can play a very similar game with open quantum walk. So we can create the open quantum walk on the T plus one node. So in the zero node, we're going to prepare initial state. And afterwards, we're just going to have a very simple open quantum walks, which are given by the very simple uh, unitary mixing maps. And uh, by playing with the coefficients of the propagating kind of forwards and backwards in time on this uh, sequence, what you have, so first of all, your steady state will have a very similar structure to what the uh, first starter Wolf and Sirac suggested. However, the coefficient in front, we have a control of. And so by playing with this coefficient, we can you know, kind of, if we can perform such a walk, we can ensure that the probability of success is higher. Okay, so, and here as an example, I've showed them kind of demonstration of how we can implement, for example, a three qubit quantum Fourier transform and how the probability of success behave as a function of the number of steps and this uh, kind of mixing parameters. Okay, so, and here's kind of a similar picture, which is telling us what is the uh, probability of success versus uh, kind of the number of steps which we need to do. So, and as we can see that uh, as we kind of make it uh, walk more and more directional, the less number of steps which we need to do to achieve high, higher degree of success. Okay, so, and I'm coming slowly to an end because I'm just going to tell you a few words about how open quantum walks can, can be used to model the propagation of the excitations in the uh, biological systems. Okay, so kind of the, our inspiration was coming from the, uh, from the papers related to the uh, so-called field of quantum biology, where it was shown that uh, in some cases, the structures, uh, photosynthetic structures could demonstrate uh, quantum behavior. Uh, 
and kind of by now this claim is disputable kind of like there is a i mean everybody agrees that there is a coherence but there is a discussion what kind of coherence it is is it the wave coherence is it the electronic coherence is it true quantum coherence or not and uh, so far these debates are uh, kind of not settled. Uh, recently, there was just a paper in the Science Advances, which is claiming that that's not the case. But however, it's still open for debate. Okay, so in the basic idea, kind of or inspiration for how we can see the open quantum works is that if you have a comp uh, some kind of photosynthetic complex or transport complex, which have a chromophores which are strongly coupled to each other, we're going to see them as the nodes for the worker. And uh, those nodes, which are weakly coupled to each other, that will be the walk walkable jump between those nodes. And uh, that's how, how it's kind of, we're going to model it. And of course, the simplest case is just consider a one dimensional system. So where there is some internal degree of freedom and you can just jump between the adjacent nodes. You can define the probabilities of jump, jump operators. And afterwards, yeah, just play some experimental mathematics game and you get some propagation. Okay, so you can we can take kind of more realistic parameters and still kind of see that, okay, do we, we, we see that there is some sort of diffusive propagation, but rather slow. And now, so we can uh, take some other model because that was a toy model. Now we have another kind of another toy model, but more realistic, which is uh, inspired by B800 and B850 complexes in the light harvesting complex. And we can have a system of rings between which excitation can travel and they couple to each other. So kind of there is a coherent evolution inside of the ring and incoherent evolution between the rings. And these could be seen as open quantum walks. Okay, so we can write the Hamiltonian. So kind of as a typical Hamiltonian for B800 ring. And so there will be coupling terms and system by Hamiltonian. We we'll now apply the standard machinery of Born-Markov. We get our system of equations in the generalized uh, Limbot form, which afterwards boiling down to the generalized Limbot equations in the kind of as it was formulated by the Hans Peter, as I mentioned uh, before. And we can discretize it, produce the jump operators for the open quantum walks, and again, do the simulations and kind of for the linear chain. And what we see that we, we have some sort of propagation, which is okay, interesting enough result, which of course kind of uh, suggests that there is a reasonable idea and we can probably. Uh, Keep, keep doing and working in this direction, uh, making the models more and more realistic. Okay, so essentially I gave you overview of everything what I wanted to tell you about open quantum walks. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, Ilya, thank you very much for a comprehensive uh, overview of open quantum walks. And um, maybe now it's the time to ask Gary to guide us through the question and answer session. And I see that there were already a few questions in the, in, in, in the chat. And um, please, since you are not so many participants, if you want to ask directly a question, please raise your hands and we can give you the, the, the right to unmute. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, thank you, Ilya. So in the chat, um, Abdul was asking, uh, this was a question quite early on in the talk. Um, he's asking, can an analog be made to work within the non-Markovian regime for these open quantum orcs? Yes, you can. Uh, the, the problem is like you, you need to have some, you need to have some structure for which you can still make some, I mean, you can have some non -Marco, there are non-Markovian generalizations of the structures like across maps, and you can of course apply them. And in this case, you, ca you can do it because like uh, the only kind of obstacle towards some generic non-Markovian structure is uh, that you need to still guarantee that you are transforming density matrices into the density matrices. But if you can overcome it with some specific forms of the non-Markovian equations, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, Abdul has another question. Um, so now he's asking, uh, what would the consequences of having non-unitary temporal evolution uh, between the jumps? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I understood the question. Maybe um, Abdul can just, um, maybe okay, you can yeah, give maybe. him a right to talk and he can ask his question directly. Okay, yeah, so maybe Abdul, if, if you would like to retype or if you'd like to speak, that's also good. Um, uh, I've given Abdul the right to speak, so he should just uh, unmute himself. And I also given Anikan the right to, to ask a question because he raised his hand. Okay. Uh, okay, Abdul is writing that he have a problem with the mic. And okay, please rephrase your question. Meanwhile, maybe Anikan can ask his question. Thank you very much for the talk, Ilya. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Frank for this opportunity to ask. Um, Ilya, in one of the earlier slides, I saw your definition of uh, uh, an expression for the open quantum work that combined a term involving ket zero. I didn't quite get the physical meaning of that uh, ket zero. Can you please maybe explain what that meant? Uh, let me just go to the, to the which definition are you? Uh, sorry. Do you remember where it was? Was it somewhere here or was it before? Because this is this is the definition of the open quantum walks. The cat zero, for example, was used here in the examples. And here, this is just, just mean that we are walking for example, along the line. Yeah, we're walking on the line and we're starting from the node number zero. So we can go plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two from plus minus one. And our internal state here is taken just to be completely unknown, unpolarized. So we don't know is the spin is up or is the spin down. So our position is fixed at the node zero, but uh, our internal degree of freedom is completely uh, unknown. So that's why we're taking it uh, half of identity. Can I maybe take up a follow-up question to that? Isn't that supposed to also carry a physical uh, interpretation of a projection of that uh, state zero? No, the, this is of course, the, this zero zero is a projection of the state zero, but I mean, this is the valid, uh, this is the valid state. I mean, like your position just is, is just a pure state. And the pure state on the space of the density matrices are projectors, so that's that's fine. But the internal degree of freedom is uh, unknown, and it's a full statistical mixture of the being in the state up or in the state down. But position, yes, is a projection. It's a pure state. It's well known. Where are you? You're you're in the node node zero. All right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> there's another, there's a, a question in the Q and A. Um, so Nico is okay. asking, has, has nuclear fission been explained from a, not, from a Markovian chain approach? Mm. So I assume that it was Nico Orche. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid my knowledge of the nuclear, uh, both fission and fusion is very limited. So I'm not sure that I'm capable of answering that question. <laughs> But also, okay. I think that it's in, in, to the best of my understanding in the nuclear reactions, I'm not sure that, I mean, like neutron scattering, I think like if, if, if my memory serves me correctly, is described by some sort of uh, mark of chains. But uh, the reaction by itself, I'm not sure because I think it's a highly non-Markovian process where it strongly depends on the roots, how, how your reaction is happening. If, if everything over there was Markovian, I think life would be much, much easier. And I think that's exactly the problems that uh, it's a highly non-Markovian process and it's, 
not just non-Markovian, it's like, it's a kind of quantum hydrodynamics. So it's all the difficulties of the quantum mechanics together with the difficulty of the classical Navier-Stokes like equations. That, that's why we're still having difficulties in the nuclear reactors and so on and so forth. Okay. But again, um, I'm, I, I'm not the expert, so I could not, not nothing of, of what I just said could be taken with any serious consideration. Uh, he also um, then just maybe brings to our attention, uh, if you assume Bohr's independence hypothesis, does that, does that mean anything? What, what do you mean? Where, where I assume always independence? Uh, so he so says that, um, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Are we still following up on the Nico's question or maybe we yes. can, yes, I, let I him ask gave, his question. I just gave Nico the right to talk. So if he unmutes himself. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, yeah, because he's more than welcome to. And meanwhile, I think Abdul have wrote more. Yeah, he wrote, so going from node to node with the passage of time, we assume unitary evolution of the state. No, 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 no. When we're going from node to node, we don't have unitary evolution. We get the, uh, we get the Markov evolution, which is given by the corresponding transition operators, but it's non-unitary. If, if we go from node to node with unitary, what would happen? We would end up in something like a unitary quantum walk. Okay, right. great. I think I'm doing <clears throat> satisfied. He says thank Nico. you. Yeah, I, I actually, I remember that the Markovian approach is very similar to Bohr's. I mean, he, he considered Bohr's independent hypothesis, which also assumes that the compound nucleus reaction, the compound nucleus, forgets how, how it was formed. So in, ah. in a sense, right, remember that. That was Bohr's original okay, yeah. work in 1930-something. And that's where mm -hmm. fission, and actually fusion, um, came to, you know, that's the, 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 the basic assumption for, for for fission, right? In a macroscopic, or in a macroscopic mm -hmm. approach, actually. So I was wondering, and then I found, I found a paper by Nicolas Schunk and Luis Robledo, where they actually uh, mentioned Markovian, but it's very rare that this, this has been utilized before. I was just curious to see that the, your, your method applies to something which is familiar, very familiar to me, like uh, Bohr's independence hypothesis, no? Which, uh, yeah, but I mean, if I again remember correctly, the things which I'm teaching to my third year students in the atomic and nuclear physics, when you when you deal with the compound nucleus, Markovianity there is coming from the fact that typical time of the nuclear reaction is what is a 10 to the minus 22, and the typical lifetime of the compound nucleus is 10 to the minus 15. So you right. get six or seven orders of the magnitudes in the times. And from that point of view, yes, you get you get kind of like a classical, even it's, it's even classical Markovianity because what you have, you kind of, your nucleus, compound nucleus is living for such a long time that it's essentially right, right. forgets fr right, from it forgets. which input reaction it's, yeah. And so the only thing which determined to you what will be the output of the reaction is how much uh, energy in the center of mass frame you yeah, in the center of mass frame. Right, 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 right. But the two, the two are linked, right? The time, the, the long scale of the time, the, the time scale is very important. Yes, yeah, yeah, say, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, the Markovianity is always related to the time scales. And yes, that's right. also related to the questions about non-Markovianity, like when, when the time scales begins to begin to overlap, when you cannot separate the time scales. Yes, now you need to be non-Markovian. Right. Then you need to be Markovian, mm -hmm. right? After, after this happens, right? When you separate, if you can well separate the time scales, you are Markov. You can apply Markovian picture, and it's usually much easier. Okay. When you cannot separate the time scales, you have to, to do non Markovian. You have to, to take all the effects into account simultaneously. Right. So in principle, it could be it could be used, right? Markovian the Markovian chain up chain approach. Uh, to what? To the to the fusion. 
the fission after after this uh, after it happened after the formation of the compound nucleus right yes yes yeah yeah this 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 could be because of the yes compound nucleus is just living for too long it's, right 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 it's kind of it's probably coming to some sort of already you know like a stationary state mm -hmm. like and and that's why when you're coming to a stationary state and like in the theory of open quantum systems you usually forget from which state you're coming to a stationary state like you know right. like your cup of tea when it's thermalized with the room it doesn't really matter was it 100 degrees or 90 degrees mm -hmm. when it's i don't know right i don't know 25 degrees there is no way to say what was the initial one unless you have a record <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Ilya. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Um, <clears throat> there is also another question in the Q&A by Kimara. Um, so yeah, so the question is, with respect to quantum coherence in biological systems, um, can open quantum walks be seen as an alternative to solving the hierarchical equations of motion for describing the observed coherence? Okay, very good question, Kimara. Obviously, it's related to your PhD research. And the simple answer is no, because uh, where the, okay, let me, or the short answer is no. And the long answer is looking like this. So when you apply hierarchical equations of motion, you're applying them to the internal dynamics because your internal rings are strongly still coupled to environments where we're applying open quantum walks. We're applying open quantum walks to the jumps between the rings. And even this is questionable because some people say, say that even the uh, tunneling between the rings is coherent and it's kind of vibration assisted. But you know th this could be argued, but definitely internal dynamics in, in, in the inside of the ring, for example, like as an internal dynamics in, inside of phenometrio also complex is have a very strong coherence and you cannot do open quantum walks. You have to, to do, I mean, you cannot even do limbot. You have to, to do hierarchical equations of motions or you have to, to separate in some way that part of the coherence. For example, like Ring von Grandelli, when he's adding extra uh, bosonic modes from the bath to the system and saying that, okay, these guys, I mean, your complex plus few bosonic baths, they are interacting in the unitary way while the bath is Markovian. And in that case, kind of to that bath, you can probably play the game of some sort of open quantum walk. But naively, no, it's a it's so strongly coupled system. I see Kimara, Kimara is happy. Okay, Abdul is again, not happy. Um, <laughs> there's another- Why, well, I mean, he's curious. <laughs> um, so we go from node n to node n plus one. If we increase the step size, example, n to n plus two, uh, or the step size changes randomly, can we also do that? What, uh, and what changes can we expect? Okay, it's a very good question. Uh, where we can jump, I mean, formally in formulation of open quantum walks, there is no restriction on whether you need to jump to the neighboring sites or you need to jump through the sites or you might have a two jumps between the same sites uh, and so on and so forth. So, and that's kind of, in, in all the examples, we have a standard uh, neighboring coupling and that's related to that. This is just the simplest examples to deal with. So whether you have the jumps beyond the kind of neighbors, it depends on the strength of your coupling. If, you, if your coupling is good enough or kind of the, the next to neighbor coupling is uh, kind of sufficient, in that case, you can probably jump in the physical systems. Uh, however, we, we didn't consider that, but uh, formally the, the kind of the formalism do not restrict that, kind of do not forbid that, it's absolutely applicable. And what to expect, I don't know. <laughs> That's an honest answer. And the second part of the question, which is, I think is even more interesting is what if the kind of, uh, uh, if, if the time, time kind of, what, it was about the, from steps. Okay, the steps uh, size changes randomly. Okay, this is related to the question is, uh, and the question, uh, th this is related to the question of the statistics, of the statistics of your, of your jumps. 
And using the statistics of the jumps, I mean, even without open quantum walks, I mean, what will be in case of open quantum walks again, I don't know, but what I, what I suspect that you can uh, produce even more interesting behaviors because um, in the case of standard quantum trajectories in kind of like, if you even not, even not standard, I mean, absolutely classical, you get the line of sides and you get kind of like classical random walk. Yes, where you can jump left and right. But now, if you are going to not just left and right, you're going to draw the probability of jump left and right from a certain probability distribution. And you can create the conditions when uh, you can observe very different behaviors. So, I mean, all sorts of strange kind of an interest in random walks like uh, levy flights are coming exactly from this type of assumptions. So yes, I don't know what to expect, but you can one can definitely expect something uh, interesting. I don't think that you can break the central limit theorem in that case because I'm not sure that it's. But I I, I don't know I I'm not a big expert in the Martingale theory to make statement about what will happen to central limit theorem, but uh, that might be an interesting question. Okay, um, <clears throat> thank you very much. I think we have reached the steady state of no more questions. Um, so I think with, with that, I'll uh, give over to Francesco again. Yeah, Gary, thank you very much for moderating the questions. <clears throat> and um, it looks like this is the time to, and the moment to thank Ilya for the nice talk and the very comprehensive uh, overview of these open quantum walks, what these open quantum walks uh, can do. Uh, we had a lively discussion, maybe with some new ideas of things to, to look at. So thank you very much to the participants uh, for that. Then I, I wish you uh, all uh, a, good, a good evening and please keep uh, staying safe because uh, in, in our line of business, we are not yet lined up for, for vaccination. <laughs> so it will probably take another, another little while until it is our turn. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Ilya, thank you so much for, for, for the nice talk. And um, I'm sure that the, 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 the summer school participants that um, were with us this afternoon uh, will be very keen to see how the story continues during the next uh, couple of lectures this week. So thank you very much, everyone. Tomorrow we will send out uh, the advert for the for the next uh, NITEP colloquium uh, next Monday, and we will have a slight change in topic. Uh, it will be still a little bit quantum, but uh, but more uh, more more gravitation oriented, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So uh, stay with us and we will see you again uh, latest uh, next Monday and the participants of the summer school, we will see them again tomorrow morning in action at nine o'clock. So Ilya, thank you very much for, for offering also the colloquium <laughs> during these two busy weeks of summer school and Gary, thank you very much for jumping in and moderating the question. So good evening to everyone <clears throat> and, uh, and we will see you shortly uh, again in Zoom. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, good evening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.